Hi guys, it's Debbie and today I am back to talk about what you may ask. Maybe about something hot and new like the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. No, the, the, the hottest new Hollywood news. No, today I'm here to talk about an Icelandic film about a sheep. But I'm very pleased to share this with you because there is a lot to unpack and it's very interesting. And don't worry if you haven't seen this film yet as I will not be including spoilers right until the very end of the video in a part that will be clearly announced, so don't worry. So the film I'm going to talk about today is called Lamb. Now, a quick premise to this review, uh, Lamb is an A24 film. Now, A24 is the company that distributed uh, the film and it is a company you might have often he heard me speaking very highly of. So to us general movie watching audience, the producers and distributors of a film can mean nothing and everything. For example, if we take some of the big famous films, uh, I don't know, Mulholland Drive or uh, <laughs> Brokeback Mountain, I'm just saying some names off of the top of my head, we don't really know who uh, the distributors are. We just like the films and decide to watch them just for what they are. But on the contrary, for example, a Disney film sells because it's a Disney film. Unfortunately, we often don't even know who the names behind these films are. We don't even know who the director of a Disney film is unless we decide to go and uh, specifically research it. On the same lines, a Blumhouse film will sell itself a lot based on the fact that it is known for its horror films. And A24 is a relatively young and small company which has become known for few but high quality films, often with unconventional topics, new and upcoming actors and directors. So it basically offers us an opportunity to enjoy great films we would have otherwise never come across. When hearing me rave about A24, many people have pointed out how the greatness of their films has nothing to do with the company itself and that we should be focusing on the filmmakers themselves. And I totally agree. It's just that in addition to that, I um, believe that at least A24 allows us to see these films. Um, many of the titles in their, uh, in their list of, of films include names we would never have really discovered or rarely would have discovered, or let's say they wouldn't have reached that same wide audience and got to the point of even going to the Oscars and winning Oscars. For example, this film, Lamb, an Icelandic film, would have been very hard to find if it hadn't been shared on huge platforms, even just the social media platforms that A24 has. But anyway, all of this set aside, let's get into the review. So the spoiler free premise uh, to the film is that it is the story of a couple living in basically the middle of nowhere in Iceland in this beautiful landscape. Some of the scenery that we see in the film is absolutely breathtaking and their life basically revolves around uh, farm activities. They look after the cattle, they care for the land, and they live on their own. It's just this couple. Until one day, a thing happens. A lamb is born. And uh, without spoilers, she is born under some very peculiar circumstances, conditions. This isn't just your regular lamb. But anyway, this lamb basically becomes the beacon of light and happiness in this household. And the couple decides to raise this lamb as if she were their own kid. Without spoilers, even from the trailer, you can see that she uh, wears normal kid clothes. Like they, they make her do certain things like a kid. So she, for example, she'll walk holding their hands, uh, she is in the house with them. And this is where I'd like to bring up the first topic um, that really struck me with this film, and that is the topic of love. I don't have kids at the moment, I don't even plan on having any, so I don't have that feeling of maternal love. But I have loved, I still love very intensely, I've felt all a range of emotions with love. And what hit me with this film is uh, the realization that you can love uh, somebody or something even if it's not even if it goes against anything uh, basically natural anything natural this couple love this lamb so much they love it like their kid they treat it like their kid they give it everything but at the same time it just feels so wrong there's something just odd about the fact of a human loving an animal like that 
which is absurd if we think of the fact that we love our cats and dogs like that. I think what makes this film look a bit odd is the fact that well, first of all, the Uncanny Valley, so we're associating this lamb with human environments and activities, even including the fact that she's wearing probably woolen clothing and she is a lamb. Um, it's as if we were like seeing a fully dressed dog sitting at a table. There'd be something odd about that. But anyway, all of this is to say that this film puts us in front of the reality of the fact that you can love a concept or something, even if it goes beyond anything that is usually considered normal. For example, talking of myself, I have felt that in the past I have loved even just the concept of certain films more than some of my friends. Um, and to quote again <laughs> Interstellar, which seems to turn up in a lot of uh, my videos, in the scene in which they're talking about, about the power of love, they are explaining about how you can basically fall in love with a person you have never even oh, met. Child. Rearing. We love people who have died. Where's the social utility in that? None. How different is that from giving love to a living creature? So this film unexpectedly definitely unsettled me with a lot of existential questions. I definitely don't agree with the people who call this couple clinically uh, insane. There are a lot of reasons why this this couple love this lamb so deeply. Anyway, if this concept unsettled me as an external viewer watching a complete fantasy film, imagine how other characters in the film feel. For example, a relative who uh, arrives at the house to spend some time with the family, <laughs> with a couple, and finds himself in front of this lamb situation. Of course, he is a bit concerned and doesn't understand what's going on. But the couple don't give any explanation to it. They don't justify it. They just say it is joy, it is happiness. They, and this is the weird aspect of the film, that it doesn't explain anything. It doesn't uh, give you any exposition. It doesn't justify anything of what's going on. It just presents you with this situation. So some of the elements that make this movie so tense and confusing are due to the fact that no questions are answered. There's just this situation and it's in the middle of this weird, beautiful, nearly foreboding and harsh to live in landscape. And it's just fine. We're so used to films telling us everything that we're lost, but at the same time, it's so natural. And in addition to this, throughout the whole film, there is always this tense, dark reminder that what this couple are doing isn't exactly the natural course of life for this lamb. Um, and all of this put together then leads into the more borderline horror side of the film, which I won't get into for now because of spoilers. I say borderline because this film doesn't really fit into one specific uh, genre category. I would probably put it in the horror category because of the sheer dark thrill it gives and because of how the film then evolves. But whatever genre you fit it in, except for the jolly moments of the family with this lamb, there's always this feeling of this tense feeling of something dark, something wrong, something odd going on. It's also been described as a fantasy film, but as uh, one review I read uh, cleverly pointed out, there's nothing really fantastic going on here. This is all very realistic and down to earth. So it'd be maybe something more surreal. And then horror comes in all shapes and sizes. Not all horrors are source style torture splatter stories and some people consider films like I'm Thinking of Ending Things a horror. Unfortunately, I've found that some people have been trying to compare Lamb to Midsummer, which doesn't really make any sense because the two films have nothing <laughs> in common apart from the fact that they're A24 films and they're set in a in generic northern <laughs> Europe. But these are two completely different types of horror. If we really wanted to compare this film to even other A24 films, it would be even more confusing because they really are all over the place. We have uh, uh, comedy horrors like Tusk, punk thrillers like Green Room, old fashioned gothic witch movies. We even have a film about a possessed dress. They're all over the place. So don't expect this film to fit the textbook definition of a horror film. And in general, I just love this film. I would highly recommend it. And it takes this simple concept of a couple with a lamb, uh, living a bit of an odd lifestyle, and then it's just becomes this big 
bold, weird concept. And with the internet and Hollywood just bombarding us with this oversaturation of content and this ever more hyped up attitude towards films, it sometimes feels good to sit back and take a breath and just enjoy something completely different, something new. It's like trying a new food, like, hey, just just try this for a moment. I think I should speak about this concept a little better in a standalone video because I've been thinking about it more and more lately. Um, because I love the hype about films. I'm beyond excited for Batman. I can't wait to go and watch The Matrix. I even got a little bit excited watching the Spider-Man uh, trailer, something which I didn't expect, especially given the fact that I haven't seen the previous two ones with Tom Holland. But at the same time, it gets to the point that there is so much content and you can't miss one thing that you just feel nauseous and it feels so good to just experience something different and something refreshing. I never spoke uh, in a full video about The Vast of Night, a film I always highly recommend if you haven't watched, please go watch it. It's set in the 60s or 70s, basically on the outskirts of the desert and it talks about this uh, switchboard girl who overhears something and decides to investigate what it is. But the peculiarity of this film is that it will often just have shots of a character listening to somebody else. So you don't even see the person who's speaking. And there's just this uh, depiction of the emotions that go over somebody's face while they're listening to somebody else talk, which is something completely uncommon in, uh, in a market in which the more lines and the more Easter eggs and the more hints you can put in, in, in a scene, uh, the more hyped up people are going to get about a film. Or even just recently, I watched about endlessness, which would basically fit in the textbook definition of a boring film, but which felt so beautiful in its weirdness. It's just these scenes of normal, depressing, but n sort of normal uh, situations, but which become so beautiful because you feel the dread of the of what's going on, but you still feel the comfort of the normality of that situation. For example, there's a scene in which a couple are visiting their child's uh, tombstone, and instead of having this overdramatic music and the characters crying, basically what you see is um, the parents clearing up the weeds around the, the tombstone and filling up the, the watering can to water the flowers, which is actually what you would see in a cemetery, and the most depressing aspect after all of it. But anyway, these films are just small examples of those little breaths of fresh air that you sometimes feel, and this is what happened with, with Lamb. Anyway, before I get too emotional, I'm going to start getting into the more spoilery aspects of the film. So if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend clicking away, leaving the video, because this will ruin it for you. So, shoo. Okay, so now we can get into the more spoilery aspects of the film, including some of the religious references, because this film is full of them. Even the fact that this lamb was born on Christmas Eve in a barn, from, and the mother was called Maria. You see where I'm going with this. This lamb, this lamb of God, this joy for the family, joy for the world. Um, and then I think that throughout the whole film, we knew something dark and supernatural was going on or was going to happen. I mean, the trailer didn't really give everything away, but there was this, this mood, this theme going on. But at the same time, I definitely didn't expect all the big bad goat lamb father demon creature coming to get Ada at the end. I knew something bad was going to happen. My two ideas were, one, either Ada was some sort of demon lamb who would suddenly turn from being this sweet, cute creature to like a murderous demon and, I don't know, carry out revenge on the parents. Or I thought that the other sheep, like the cattle, would suddenly turn against the, the, this couple and sort of stampede into the house and murder everybody. So I knew something was going to happen, but I definitely didn't expect this ending. Now, a lot of people have tried to figure out what this actually all means, and I have maybe one idea. So apparently this couple lost their baby. I hadn't seen it, I hadn't understood this uh, when I first watched the film. I actually found it out reading about the film after, but basically there is a shot in which you see a tombstone with the name Ada on it, so it's sort of implied that this was their kid that died. That's why they are so attached to this new lamb. 
So this lamb is sort of like a new gift for them, a new life, uh, uh, a new happiness for them. If we're still going along the religious path of things, maybe they didn't fulfill this new life they were given in the totally righteous way. For example, Maria goes and kills Ada's sheep mother for no reason except for jealousy because basically she wasn't really doing anything, just being this sort of nuisance and hanging around because she obviously wanted her, her, her child back. Um, and then also uh, it is implied that she has had relationships uh, like that she cheated on her husband with her husband's brother and then when he tries again she doesn't like push him away in disgust so they have sinned and they still sin so maybe this demon coming to get Ada away at the end is sort of like well we gave you your second chance we gave you your happiness you didn't fulfill it completely and it's also a metaphor of grief in my opinion because when something so bad like that happens in your life it just sticks with you you know when something terrible happened and you end up uh, suppressing it and you end up covering it with all different activities to try and forget about it but there's that grief always sticks with you it lingers with you and you always have the fear of it happening again so at the end of the film when Ada is taken away and her husband is killed Maria is stricken with grief she's suffering but in that last shot she's basically not even crying. It's sort of as if she knew that sooner or later this joy would happen. She sort of just accepts this fate, in my opinion. So, you know, there are different analyses of what this film actually means. Um, an ending which, again, I definitely didn't expect. So this is my analysis maybe of it. Probably the more I think about this film, the more things will come to mind as it always happens. Um, but I would love to hear what you guys think about this film, you know, what the meaning might be of it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And as this video is coming to an end, while you're down there with the comment, also make sure to subscribe. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.